Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is on air conditioning systems with R22 and R410A, why is the pressure so low on the low side gauge? So this gauge right here is talking about the evaporator coil in cooling mode, and this is also referred to as the vapor side, suction side, or low side. So if you see a pressure for R22 that's lower than 60 PSIG, or for R410A and it's lower than 105 PSIG, you're entering into where, if you look at R4 tonight, it's the pink inner ring. You're entering into where it's below 32 degrees, and that's not a good thing for the evaporator coil. Likewise, uh, if it's below 60 PSIG, if say it's like 57, 56, you're below um, freezing for your R22. So you have late green for R22 is a saturated temperature. Now, what causes that? You could have a blocked filter dryer, you could have a liquid line restriction uh, right before your thermostatic expansion valve or your piston. It could be your screen right here. You see that? I don't know if you can make that out very well. It could be your screen. It could be the, it could be the distributor tubing. It could be the thermostatic expansion valve itself. All right. It could be any of those items. So. You could have a restriction somewhere in the liquid line before it actually gets to the evaporator quill. Now, the other thing it could be, it could just be low on refrigerant charge, right? So if you add refrigerant and you are not getting this pressure to rise, if it's R22 or if it's r 4 a you're not able to get this pressure to rise, but all that's happening is on this side, the pressure keeps increasing and the actual saturated temperature uh, maybe falls, your widening the gap and you're increasing the subcooling which means you're adding refrigerant to the system you're increasing the subcooling but you're not able to increase this pressure uh, then then that's not a system that's low on refrigerant that's a system where you have maybe a liquid line restriction or a air blockage all right so you have some type of uh, blockage in the air distribution system so say it could be uh, dust on the bottom of the evaporator coil or on the return side of the evaporator coil uh, you could have a dirty filter. You could have a possible second filter somewhere that you weren't aware of. Maybe, you know, there's two filters that are in series in the ductwork for some reason. Maybe the homeowner installed another one and never realized there was one in there. I've seen that multiple times. Uh, you could have the duct is collapsing in on itself. You could have that acoustical liner maybe coming apart and just clogging the duct. You could have maybe the ductwork is not sized properly. Maybe the ductwork is too small. So... Uh, maybe if the pressure is is here and you have the correct refrigerant charge and you have an 18 to 21 degree temperature difference but over time after maybe half an hour you know the pressure starts decreasing even lower then that would be an indication of a small duct uh, either either an undersized return or an undersized supply uh, maybe you have some of the supply registers are shut in cooling mode or some other type of uh, air blockage all right so so that is some of the things that could be occurring if you see a low pressure. Now, it could be that you're low on refrigerant. And in that case, you want to try to find where the leak is coming from. Uh, maybe it's even possibly from uh, multiple techs uh, connecting and disconnecting the gauge sets or, or what, what have you. It could be a, uh, coming out of a service port or maybe one of the Teflon seals. Or in worst case, it's when you have some type of braze joint or uh, crack in the uh, tubing somewhere. Where they had to pump down the unit, uh, fix the leak, nitrogen test, vacuum pump, and then release the refrigerant back into the system. Or if it's something where you were able to just tighten the nut down a little bit harder where the Teflon seal was or something along those lines. Once you start the unit back up and after 5 to 10 minutes, you're checking the refrigerant charge again and you're able to add the refrigerant into the low side then the low side will then end up climbing as well as the high side while you're charging the system. Okay, so it could just be that you're low on refrigerant. But once again, if you add refrigerant to a system, uh, say that's at 105 PSIG, or maybe it's at 100 PSIG or 95 PSIG, you're adding refrigerant to it, and the only thing that's happening is the high side keeps increasing but the low side does not increase right that's a telltale sign that it's not low on refrigerant and that you need to start doing some investigative work for a more in-depth analysis of reading the gauge set go ahead and check out the uh, playlist for that hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at ac service tech channel